Hello everybody, Hi. welcome to the joy of trucking. This is where we like to share our experience with you to help you be prepared for the trucking industry if that's something that you're pursuing as a career. But also you can just join us for fun if you're an armchair traveler uh, discovering the roads of America. So today we are here with Kevin who is going to talk to us about a very, very important aspect of trucking, and that is all the different clocks and times that you have to keep track of. So here he is with, oh, with a, with visual. a visual, nice. <laughs> Take it away. All right, so the Department of Transport has created all these rules to prevent truckers from running for 24 hours and, and you know, driving half asleep and, and making the roads safer in America and also just to help kind of regulate things and keep everybody on the same plane. So we have... And mainly I think for safety. Yeah, for safety. Mainly safety. Yeah. To make the roads of America safe. Oh, that's good. So we have uh, oh, Canada. the 8-hour clock. That's safe too. With a 30-minute thing. 11-hour clock, a 14-hour clock, and a 70-hour clock. So all of these you have to watch every day. First of all, the eight hour clock. Hey, you need to tilt it down a little. The eight hour clock. There you go. Yeah, bring it closer. That's good. Uh, you, start your, you start your day by going on duty and the 14 hour clock and the eight hour clock begin counting. So from that moment, you have 14 hours to work. That's a long day. Yes. And you don't necessarily have to work the whole 14, but at 14, you must stop working. And that way, you're not driving, you know, on a very fatigued. long day and fatigued and being dangerous to all the little cars out there and or other hurting trucks. people. <laughs> so, uh, and some guys will, will push the clock as far as they can to maximize their income and get as much driving in as they can or whatever. Uh, and other guys will will set their own boundaries like I'm only going to work eight hours a day or nine hours a day or whatever and as a, as a driver it's up to you how you how you want to run your your truck you know it's not the company is not breathing down your neck going you got to work 14 hours today and we want to see that you're not punching a time clock you're in charge of this truck and you have to operate it in the way that you see fit that suits you that is the safest way that you can operate the truck so the 14 hours is a limit. Right. It's I mean, not... if you're if you're a company driver and you say, I'm only going to drive three hours a day, you know, I think that your company would have an issue with that. You're not going to be very productive. <laughs> you're not going to be a, he wouldn't make any a very good asset to the either. company. But anyway, yes. the eight-hour clock starts, the 14-hour clock starts when you go on duty. The eight-hour clock will count down those eight hours, and before it runs out, you have to take a 30-minute break. So that's, that's a mandatory 30-minute break somewhere in your day. And if you take it real early, that clock starts over and eight hours later, it will say, take another break if that happens before your 14 hour shift ends. Yeah. So you can do it. But you uh, might have to do it twice. But you might have to do it twice. And if you're, if you're busy or you wanna get more, more work hours in, you'll try and time that break for somewhere in the middle of the day. The 14 hour clock can be stopped if you go off duty and after two hours, that clock will stop. And what it's doing is splitting your shift. So what will happen is uh, after two hours, it will automatically stop the 14 hour clock. And when you go out back on duty, it'll resume counting, which means let's say you take three hours off at noon. So you start at eight, you work till 12, you take three hours. At three o'clock, you go back on duty. You still have 11 hours you can work. And if you have a lot to do and you want to maximize, you're going to be working until very late at night, which is not healthy either. Uh, so, so watch that. Yeah, we you know, did that the first week. We did or that two. a couple it of times. I was trying to, crazy. I was trying to save the hours because I was, I was not moving. Like if you're, if you're at a, at a dock getting loaded, and it takes them a long time, or if you're, if you're sitting in a, in a place and waiting for your next load, and it takes more than two hours, then you get the load, then you're like, great, now I can, now I can go and do this run. Next thing you know, it's like one o'clock in the morning. You still got time in your clock and you're really tired. Yeah. And the next day, you're going to start really late. Yeah. And what happens is you start getting later and later because when your 14 hour clock runs out, you must stop for 10 hours. So if you stop that clock at 1 a.m., 
you can't get going again until 11 o'clock in the morning the next day and so you've already wasted half your morning it's yeah. better to in in my opinion it's better to you know uh finish your day at a decent hour and sign off or end your shift and 10 hours later you can start working again and i like to i like to go early in the morning and the, the benefit of that too is you get to the truck stops earlier before they fill up so a lot of times if you get there at eight o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night they're full and you got nowhere to stay and now you're on the hunt for a, a safe haven which could take another hour or two yeah. so uh that's the 14 hour clock and the eight hour clock the 11 hour clock is your driving time can we just i just want to yes. add something in with the split the split gets very complicated like we said and what we learn from other truckers too is like let's say you're you're you know in a situation where you have turned off that 14 hour clock um if you just do one little thing in those two hours, then it won't automatically split it. Right. You can, if you want to avoid the split. One hour and 55 minutes, you could go back on duty for, for a couple of minutes and just say, I'm on duty. It, yeah. it will not split. Then you, then you sit there for another two hours if you have to, yeah. and it won't split your shift. So now we're talking about the 11 hour clock. The 11 hour clock is your actual driving time. And this device is connected to the truck. As soon as you hit five miles an hour, it goes into driving that's your status uh, and when you stop the truck let's say you're you know you get to your destination or you're fueling or whatever uh, if you get to a stop sign or a stoplight or something like that it's not gonna it's not gonna change but if you're stopped for more than five minutes it will change leave you on duty but take it out of the driving status so it saves that 11 hour clock the 11 hour clock you know, for guys like us that are getting paid by the mile, that's where you make your money. So you do what you can to save that 11 hour clock. If you if you stop somewhere and you know you're gonna be there a while, take it out of driving right away. You're gonna save those five minutes that you could be making money later down the road, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you take it out so often that it ends up being longer than your 14 hour clock, you don't get that time. Then no. the 14 hour clock, clock kicks in as your countdown yeah let's let's say i i i take off i start driving i get i get to a destination i drop and hook i'm there for an hour then i drive another few hours i get to the next place i drop and hook i'm there for an hour this goes on and on now i've only driven eight hours today but my 14 hour clock runs out because i've used the rest of the time in yards doing different stuff not driving when the 14 hour clock runs out that's it you can't keep using that driving clock 14 hours is the end of your shift because yeah. you cannot stop the 14 hour clock except with a split except when it splits after two yeah. hours that's that okay driving okay. clock very important that's where you're making money yeah 70 hour clock at the bottom here now oh now this, we're is, this is the trick <laughs> and you have to watch this i mean yes so what it does is it takes the last seven days and adds up how many hours you drove each day. That's this chart right here. You got a tip it so So these are all the days of the week leading up to today and how many hours we worked each day. So sometimes we worked nine, 10 hours. Sometimes we worked 12, even 13 hours, depending on what was going on and how, how far we wanted to go and you know how long it took us to get to a safe haven. So every seven days, and it and so tomorrow it's going to forget about day eight going back and use today right in that total it just takes the last seven days if you hit 70 hours in those last seven days you have to stop and park and do a reset which means for 34 hours you cannot work you're gonna you cannot park, drive you cannot work you cannot no. you cannot either <laughs> you cannot take your load a couple of miles ahead or Go do something else or whatever you can you can go on personal conveyance if you want to take the the just the tractor and go to a restaurant or go shopping or something like that but the but danger not, there is we've heard from other truckers that sometimes and you, you do need to ask your company if that's okay to do yeah you do have to get but permission sometimes it'll even though you have personal conveyance it happened to other drivers that it kicked into driving and if it kicked into driving for even just one minute they had to start their 34 hour reset over. Yep, they put you so back we, on the job. So we have not done that because we don't want to take that chance. So we don't do that personal conveyance thing in the middle of our 34. Right. Now we are usually working long days. So our 70 hour clock runs out and we have to do a reset, which 
it's okay with me because then you got a day to catch your breath, do laundry, make YouTube videos, make videos, <laughs> write emails, catch up on sleep, whatever you gotta laundry, do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other guys take a walk. Other guys will will work shorter days and never have to do a reset. As long as you watch that clock, you'll see. You know, oh, look, today I have 16 hours left. You know, tomorrow. Oh, so today I'm only going to work eight hours. Tomorrow I'll have eight hours left and so on and so on, your your clock will never run out. When it runs down to zero, you're stuck. You cannot move anymore at zero. So what happened to us last night, we got in here, and I think we, we had less than an hour left on the 70 hour clocks. So yeah, I think it was 28, 28 minutes, minutes. 28 minutes and six seconds. So obviously <laughs> the next day we're not going anywhere. We'll, we'll pull out of here and 20 min 28 minutes later, we have to stop for 34 hours. So we just stayed here. Yeah. And that clock after 34 hours, it'll reset to 70 hours. But I mean, some uh, we're we're OTR. We're out for three, four weeks at a time. So that day off every seven is a blessing. Some guys are only out for two weeks. Let's say you're on a regional kind of thing, or you're OTR, but you know you want to get home every two weeks, and you're scheduled that way because you want to be with your family. So rather than spend a day out on the road at a gas station someplace, and you don't even want to be, you just watch your clock, keep it under 10 hours a day and after two weeks you still have time left and you get back home instead of instead of having a 34 reset in the middle of those two weeks somewhere you, you're getting yourself home well and when we went out the first time we were out five weeks we we're out five weeks and we had one reset and then we got caught in this perpetual yes. thing where we never hit the 70 hours so we actually worked every day for two weeks and that was crazy but they so. were short days and what happened was it would it would recap we'd get we'd get the hours from eight days ago so at one point we only got like six or seven hours that we could work in a day and yeah. when we worked them we still hadn't hit the 70 and it picked up the hours from eight days yeah. before so the next day we worked seven hours the next day we worked eight hours so at some point after two weeks we were like we're just going to take a 34 hour reset yeah. right now and you can do that too you can yeah. reset your clock if you feel like you want to you have to or whatever so those are the clocks that's how we understand it after after a couple months on the road we think we've we've got a handle on it. i used to i used to want to save that clock and try and stop the clock and save my hours all the time and what happened was i just prolonged the day or didn't get my reset and it was weird so yeah, one day we worked 16 hours one day we were on the job 16, 16 hours, hours because we took us because it split and it was a long long day and i'm like what are we doing it's yeah. one o'clock in the morning and, and is, we started at like six seven yeah. eight a.m just stupid. insane so, and also so don't don't go off duty unless you know you're going to be somewhere a long time and you want to save that that clock and and finish the job no matter what time it is when you're done and see this is something else that yesterday i knew i had nine hours left on the 70 hour clock but i knew i wanted to get as far as i could and i had to i had to uh get a live unload at one place then deadhead to another place get a live load and so each time we stopped i stopped the clock i went off duty because i wanted to save that 70 hour clock so i could get down here as far as i could because before the 70 ran before out before the 70 ran out yeah because that time will help me when I go back on duty. I'll be much closer to my destination where I want to unload. So that yesterday I played the clock. I saved as much as I could by going off duty and stopped the 70 hour clock every time I went off duty. But normally let it run out. Just stay on duty if you're sitting at some place. Keep it to 14 hour days. Well, that's our, that's, that's our, that's how we're doing that's it. That's how we're doing it because we just kind of tried to have a semblance of routine. You know, because mm -hmm. like he was saying at the beginning, we were working, it was never consistent. We would work, We one time we worked till two in the morning. There were times we got up and started working at like four in the morning. Like there was just no routine and it was kind of crazy making. So we have basically implemented a little bit of a routine. We tend to get up and, and get going by seven now, yeah. you know, so and, that, and that creates a little bit of uh, a routine in your life, which is important to have for your mental health. So we, we talked to a new driver last week who was, who was going a little crazy because she, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't get into a routine because she would stop and then 10 hours later get going. So today, you know, you're stopping at seven o'clock at night. Well, you're going to get going at 5 a.m. tomorrow. And that means you're up, fed, clean, truck ready, and you start driving or, you know, you go on duty at 5 a.m. Well, then the next day, 
your 14 hour clock runs out and it's what? Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock. But sometimes you work later, sometimes you work less. So she would do exactly 10 hours and then start working again. And after a while, she was working at night. She she would she would start right. work at like eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Other times she'd start at three in the morning. Because she and, also you know, she, she was just saying, oh, I only get ten hours off. I only get ten hours off. No, that's not right. You're in charge of this truck, and you're in charge of how you're going to work, and you have to do what's safe and what's right yeah. for you. And if you can't, you know, if if you need to take an extra hour, or let's say you want to stop work at six o'clock every night mm -hmm. or if you want to start work at seven o'clock every morning that's you up can, to you you can do that you can do it and we met a guy we met a werner driver two days ago and he said he only works about eight hours a day yeah because he just he says he gets too tired after the eight hours and the company's never said anything about it he's mm -hmm. been with them for over a year and that's how he does it you know so he's not going to make the same amount of miles as somebody who pushes that 11 o'clock and he's not going to get the 70 hour clock. he's not going to get the 70 hour uh, the 34 hour reset after 70 right. hours either but he's working he's working normal comfortable yeah. days and he's very happy with it he's got enough time in the evenings to do everything he wants yeah. to do so, so that's that's a message we have for you too you know you need to figure out what works for you we wanted to explain to you how the clocks work because it took us a long time to figure things out especially the split really messed us up at, yeah. at the beginning um and you know which which clock stops which one like if you go on yard move does does this still keep running or that still running so there's a lot of weird little details and it took us a while to figure it out so we wanted to share the knowledge that we have gathered by now with you to help you um, but the decisions you know of how you're going to work those clocks that's of course up to you everybody's a little different yep maybe and you maybe you want to take lunch every day at 12 o'clock well that's your eight hour clock and it's a 30 minute break sometimes what we do is we, we pull into a fuel lane and fill the tanks and pull forward and go to the bathroom and grab a drink and come back and there's one minute left for the 30 minute break and we'll just like let's sit here for 60 seconds and <laughs> we've we've fulfilled that 30 minute yeah, break and now we're blocked, at <laughs> if you're blocked in the fuel lane behind a werner truck uh that's not us is it <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm not gonna sit there for 30 minutes and block the lane if that's the case i'll, I'll pull over right. to the side or whatever if i know but if you look if you're watching your clocks and you're aware of all this stuff and you're gonna look at it and go hey you know, one more minute one more minute that's not going to hurt anything and then i fulfilled that obligation i don't have right. to worry about two hours from now it runs out and i'm like oh no now i have to pull over and right. i'm only i'm only 10 minutes from the from the unload point you know yeah but even with that you know it, when we do that with using the fuel fueling as part of our 30 minute that's our decision you know some some people take a real half hour break yep. you know yep. eat something take a little walk make a you know whatever take take a minute to meditate so it's up to you how you structure this time but those are sort of the the logistics of how all these different clocks yep. work so. another really important thing to remember another reason why you have to keep an eye on this is when you're planning your trip you pick up a load you fill out all your paperwork on the tablet as to you know how much it weighs and the serial number and blah 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 and then it says, what time are you going to deliver? And you think to yourself, well, it's only an eight hour drive. I'll be there in eight hours. And you look at this gadget here and it says, <laughs> nope, in three hours, you're going to shut down for 10 hours or you're going to shut down for 34 hours. So you better you better put the right yeah. ETA on there yeah. according to this clock, not just how many hours it's going to take. Right. To and the 30 it. minute, you have to you get the 30, 30 minute. minute. You have to stop somewhere <laughs> during the day for 30 minutes. So that's going to set your ETA back too. So. Remember this when you're trip planning, folks. Yes. All right. All right. That's it. I hope that was valuable information for you. It took us a while to figure it out, so we thought that might uh, might help you if you're still like saying, oh my God, yeah. what's with all these different countdowns? Keep watching it. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them below. Please give us a thumbs up if you, if you got some value from this. And subscribe to our channel if you want to come along and keep learning or in just, uh, you know, enjoying the ride, hanging out with us. And with that, we say goodbye. Thanks Bye. for joining us and the joy of trucking with love from Kevin and Tanya. Bye. Bye-bye.